Shakespeare wrote, We are such stuff as dreams are made on. We are such stuff as dreams are made on. My talk today is called Dream Your Dreams. And I think it's important just right off the bat to clarify what I mean when I am talking about our dreams today. A dream is not, I am going to win a gazillion dollars and live on a private beach for the rest of my life. That is a fantasy. A dream is not, I'm going to attract the perfect partner who is going to agree with every single thing I say and ever do. That is most certainly a fantasy. <clears throat> A divine dream, however, a divine dream is what I am talking about today. A divine dream is grounded in spiritual truth and holy alchemy. So taking those two fantasy examples I just gave you, the divine dream version of that might be something like, I have a dream to be financially secure and have a healthy relationship. That would be the divine, grounded dream. And we all have divine dreams for ourselves and for each other, from the smallest to the largest dreams. Think, for example, of a potter. A potter. We have a potter in our midst, our beloved Tracy Cronin. I bought two of her pieces at the Holiday Bazaar, and I love them so much. Thank you. I thought of you when this came to me. So think about a potter who looks at her plain slab of clay sitting there. A dream or dream idea, as I also call them, because sometimes dream idea helps to ground our dreams in reality. So a dream or dream idea is what transforms that lump of clay into something tangible and beautiful and useful. So really, the spiritual principle of our dreams or dream ideas is transformation. Divine dreams occur through the spiritual process of transformation. So what is your dream? Really, what is your dream? Right now, in this very place where you are in your life, maybe you have a huge dream. That's great. Maybe right now your dream is small and it is simple. That's great. Maybe you have several dreams, which is great. And maybe, maybe you don't know what your dream is right now. That is just as great. Because today, my friends, I am inviting you into being willing to open yourself up to one or to allow many of your existing dreams or to discover your dreams. And hear me when I say this, it does not matter if you are 14 or 114. We humans are meant to dream. We are meant, we are meant in every single stage in our life to continue growing and learning. And our dreams support this. As long as it harms no one, our divine dreams always support our soul's growth. That's right. That's right. So why am I talking about this right now with everything going on in our country here in the United States? Because... Our dreams save us, loves. Our dreams save us individually, and our dreams save us collectively. The transformation of whatever that slab of clay is in your life or in the collective life of humanity, that transformation is what I'm talking about today. So we teach in New Thought that everything is always created twice. Everything is always created twice. First in thought and then in the manifest world. Vincent van Gogh, or van Gogh, depending on where you live, said, 
I dream of painting, and then I paint my dream. I, he dreamt of it first. He thought of it first. I dream of my painting, and then I paint my dream. Think about it. First, we think about planting a garden, then we do it. We think about building a fence, or a business, or a family, then we do it. It may not be exactly what we originally thought it would be. Why? Because God or spirit or source always has a bigger, better idea than we can ever come up with. And the bigger and better idea that source comes up with is always going to be more aligned for your specific soul. So, this is why we always think about it first, and then our opportunity is to co-create it with the divine. We co-create our dreams with divinity itself. So there is a somatic process that I always use when I'm talking about this subject, when I'm talking about dreams. And I want to start this conversation by making it really real for us, by feeling it in our body temples. Because so often dreams can feel very out of reach. Anybody? It can just feel sometimes far away or like this huge mountain to climb. So what I'd like for you to do, just in this moment, just easily and effortlessly, I invite you to bring into your mind's eye, you can leave your eyes open for this or close them if you want, it doesn't matter, it's just, this is a simple, simple thing. Just think for a moment, if you would, about a dream that you had that came true. A dream you had about something that came true. It could be you had a dream to go to college or to, to call in a partner or, or have uh, kids. It could have been a creative expression of some sort that you wanted to put out into the world. Maybe your dream was letting go of a destructive habit or addiction. Or maybe it was achieving a certain level of financial freedom. Whatever that dream was for you, just take a second. Do you have it? We've all, we've all, ha we've all had them. Maybe you wanted to move to a certain place and you are here now or there now. Whatever that dream was that was realized, I invite you to bring that into your awareness and now, just as easily, take a moment and picture what your life was like before this dream happened. Feel that in your body temple. Remember, how did it feel? How was your life before that dream happened? How different were you as a person back then? Oh, how different were you as a person back then? How different were your circumstances and your experiences? And notice now, if you will, on this next easy breath, the growth that you experienced as a result of that dream being realized. You are not the same, my love. One of my favorite quotes of all time from Carl Sagan is, dreams are maps. Dreams are maps. All we need to do is look back on a dream that came true in our lives that we supported and we took the steps to achieve. And we can see that, oh my word, that was a map to get me to where I am right now to this next dream. Our dreams guide us into our greater becoming. But how often do we ignore them? Our dreams, whatever they may be, guide us into our greater becoming. And know that your dream, this dream that you had, that came directly from what I like to call your particular unique inner heaven. Not to be confused with any other kind of heaven. It's all good. But your inner heaven is the place where love lives within you. It's that bliss state consciousness. It's that place of the Most High right here on earth within you. It is the place within you where love lives, where unconditional love lives. We most easily access our inner heaven when we are in alignment with our soul. 
It's the most natural thing in the world. If you watch babies, they experience their inner heaven hourly. You know? We knew it back then. We had full access back then, every single one of us. And we can call that forth. Anytime we are in moments of joy or unbridled laughter, we're deeply connected with another person or, or we are with Mother Nature and connected, we are, we are in communion with our inner heaven. When we are creating, when we have a sigh of contentment, we're connecting with our inner heaven. And when we experience a dream realized, small, medium, or large, we are in our inner heaven. Now, what if you have a dream, but for whatever reason you are unable to pursue it in this moment? This could be due to health issues or, or, or finances or responsibilities at home. And if this is where you are at the moment, I want you to know that while we humans think time is linear, it is not. It is not. Time is a construct that we have created. So please, I invite you to release any anxiety around it has to happen, it has to happen. Remember, God always has a bigger idea that more aligns with our soul and our soul growth. As I always say, some of you long timers will know this, on time, in time, God's time. Or if you prefer on time, in time, divine time, it's a great mantra if you are in a place right now where you have a dream and you are unable to take steps to move forward, on time, in time, divine time. On time, in time, divine time. And while I know that having patience can be a challenge when it comes to our dreams, my love, hold to the knowing that your divine plan, your beautiful, magnificent, unique soul is at work within you right now. It may not feel that way at the moment, but it is. Because God or source, quantum consciousness, is never stagnant. It can't be. Spirit is the create, creative animating force of the universe. Our inner universe and our outer universe. Spirit is the animating force of your life and of our world, and it never, ever stops working. And it is clearing the way for your soul right now. So the more that we can all gently turn to that inner heaven during whatever season we may be in, and gently notice even the tiniest moments of grace and love, divine energy then is generated within us in an even greater way. It's magnified and we can feel it. As we teach around here, what you focus on grows. So my invitation for you, if you need to be patient with your dreams right now, is to do your best to focus on the good or God or gold, all the same, in your life, however small medium or large. So please, please know that wherever you are on your journey, on your dream journey, you are supported by the heavens. Know this. Now, on a very different note, please hear me in this conversation when I say, you know, Common sense prevails here. I just have to say that, common sense, because, you know, like, I mean, it, you know, I would need to really rethink things if I decided that my dream was to be the next point guard for the LA Lakers. <laughs> that is never going to happen. Let me assure you. Let me assure you. Again, fantasy. It's very important that we get really clear, not that I've ever had a fantasy to be on a basketball team, but you understand my point. 
It's really important, important to get clear on the difference between fantasy and divine dreaming. Just like Ernest Holmes said that our teaching here in New Thought is not a get-rich-quick scheme. It is also the farthest thing from the social media influencer, snake oil, new age, you can manifest anything in your life if you just think about it enough. Do not get me started. That is such a gross misunderstanding of metaphysics. My friends, no matter how much I may think I want to be a point guard for the Lakers, ain't gonna happen. I, I don't even know basketball. Lakers, I have no idea. What, what, what is it? Portland Trail. Portland Trail. See, I wouldn't even know. That is how far of a stretch, Greg, this particular fantasy would be for me. A female team, yeah, I don't even know, but... W, yes, great, great. You get my point. You get my point. The true and real divine dreams that come from our soul or our inner heaven are always possible. Okay? They're always possible. That's what Darcy was singing about this morning. I believe, I believe, I believe, hey, I believe, I believe, I believe. Hey. Those are the soul dreams that we're talking about. And you get to choose to pursue them or not. This thing called free will that we have, that is such a glorious gift. We receive these dreams, these divine dreams, these divine ideas that are gifts. But we don't have to do them. It's just an offering from our soul. So, Let's take a moment and get in touch with what your dream or dream ideas that are calling you right now might be. And this is going to be different for everyone. Are you willing? Yeah? To do this process? All right. So for those of you here, those of you at home, if you're listening, if you're in the car, please pull over. Um, because I'm going to invite you to take a deep breath and close your eyes as you are comfortable. You may want to put your hand on your heart. That's such a nice way to anchor if that serves you. Let's take another easy breath in. And on this next breath, I invite you to silently ask yourself that love within you, that brilliant inner knower of yours, what is my soul's dream for me this day? What is my soul's dream for me this day? And I invite you to just let this be easy. Just allow yourself to see this or to feel this. There's no wrong way to do this. Allow yourself to open to the dream call of your soul right now, however big or small. And you can silently ask yourself, what experience is it that I would like to bring into my life with this dream? What is the experience? And just breathe, this doesn't have to be hard. However you receive this information, it's correct. Just breathe. Allow this dream of yours to be seen, to be heard, to be felt from your inner heaven. And as you do this, I invite you to notice how this dream, this divine dream makes you feel in your body temple. It 
perhaps lighter, freer, more expressive, more abundant, in alignment, healthy. Just notice how this dream makes you feel. And now, I invite you to gently ask your inner wisdom self, what step can I take, if I choose, to support this dream? What step or steps can I take, if I choose, to support this dream idea? And just listen with the ear behind the ear, with your heart, with your soul. This should be very gentle. It may be as simple as calling someone or meditating or praying or clearing some space in your home or creating an outline of some sort. Whatever it is for you, it is right and it is a gentle nudge from spirit supporting you supporting this dream. God can only do for us what God can do through us. This is that teaching. Now I invite you to take another deep breath. And I invite you to silently thank your higher wisdom self, your inner light, as the Quakers call it. And knowing that you can always return to this inner heaven for guidance at any time. When you are ready, just gently open your eyes, return to the room. Take a moment and notice how your body temple feels now. We, my friends, are such stuff as dreams are made on. When a child was born, the great poet John O'Donohue wrote, Blessed be the mind that dreamed the day the blueprint of your life would begin to glow on earth, illuminating all the faces and voices that would arrive to invite your soul to growth. Dreams are never to be taken lightly, my loves. Dreams are required for our soul growth. As O'Donohue writes, blessed be the mind that dreamed the day the blueprint of your life would begin to glow on earth, illuminating all the faces and voices that would arrive to invite your soul to growth. In other words, we never accomplish a dream alone. Never, never. Often what can happen when people are working towards their dream, there can be a feeling of isolation. Anybody? There can be a feeling, because it's within you, right? And it's this feeling that, that this is yours. It is not. Our dreams belong to everyone. Why? Because we are all connected. All of us on the seen and unseen sides of life. We never accomplish a dream alone. It does not matter what the thing is. Take the potter. Someone had to mine that clay from the earth and then organize it in such a way so that someone else would ship it to the store wherever that potter lives, in this case, Oregon. And then someone had to take that 
that clay and put it on the shelves. Someone had to ring it up. If, if you were in a store where you rang it up yourself, someone had to create the bags that you may put it in, whether you brought them into the store with you or they were there. Do you get my point? It does not matter what your dream is. The potter might think that she's sitting alone creating this beautiful creation. Think of all the souls, all the people that participated in that creation. That is how big and important our dreams are. Think about the dream that you, you already accomplished, that you brought to mind just a few moments ago. Consider for a moment all of the people that it took in your life along the way for you to bring that dream to fruition. All the people, all the souls supporting your dream. And we do that for each other every single day. Every single day. All the faces and voices arrive, O'Donohue writes, to support your soul growth. So it's never done alone. And if you can lean into this awareness as you move forward in your divine dreams, it will support you. It will buoy you. It will remind you that you are never alone no matter what it is. No matter what it is. And my friends, we are here to dream together. We're here to share a dream for our community. So for example, my dream for this community, New Thought Center for Spiritual Living, is that we are able to pay off this building so that we can do even more work in the world and continue to grow so that we can get this message of unconditional love out into the world to kindred spirits who have no idea that we exist yet so that we can help to create even more peace on the planet. Do you see? It's one dream that is connected to the planet, to the earth, to humanity. My friends, we can share a dream for our country right here in the United States. We can share a dream that this incredibly important election year, that together we work side by side to ensure free and fair elections and that our democracy stays standing. We get to dream together the divine dream. We get to participate in a dream that works for all so that we truly can help make this world a better place for all people and creation. There is a Jewish proverb that I love. I love this. It is, pay attention to your dreams for they are your letters from God. I believe the divine dream for our country is a letter from God. We have dreams for ourselves, for our loved ones, for our community, for our country, and these love letters from God, from spirit, are so important because every dream that we have on some level, however small, however large, will bring a modicum of liberation, of freedom, of growth, and of greater joy. All of which, my friends, all of which are your birthright. So this week, I invite you to really, really spend some inner investigative time being with your dream or dream idea that came to you today in our process together and focus on the step that you were given or steps that you can take if you choose to support the transformation of your particular clay. The second thing I'm gonna invite you into is to hang out with your inner heaven. It is such a cool place. It is such a cool place. Even if it's just a few minutes a week, 
Turn within and allow yourself to feel the unconditional love that lives and breathes at the center of your being, that supports you every day. This will strengthen you wherever you are on your dream journey in every way. In every way. And finally, I invite you to take heart. Take heart, my friends that your dreams really are love letters from God. They are the inner map leading, leading the way to greater freedom and joy. And know that we can consciously support each other's dreams. What a beautiful spiritual practice that is to recognize that any time any time you do anything for another human being, you are engaging in supporting their dream. Do you see? The dream of greater freedom, of experiencing kindness or compassion or goodness. We get to be angels for each other and for each other's dreams, for ourselves and for the world. <laughs>